Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Success Secrets Revealed with Ronald Kuhlman, your host. Uh, first, I want to talk a little bit about the show, how it came about. Then I'm going to introduce our sponsor, and then I'm going to talk a little bit more about our amazing guest today. We have with us Monica H. Henderson, and she is the president and founder of Mind Life Motivation. You really want to hear what she has to say. It's, it's amazing. I've heard a lot about it already. So first, I want to talk about Success Secrets Revealed came about. I have a radio show called Internet Marketing and Business Solutions with Ronald Koeman. Uh, it aired weekly. We had a 1.7 million reach, but because of COVID, the radio station wasn't manning it, literally having people go in, so they're just running reruns. I didn't want to stop contributing and uh, doing live interviews and bringing value to our listeners, so I created this live stream. And what I do is I take out the audio, I send it to the radio station, they um, put it in their rotation at some point, it will play to that 1.7 million people. But also, uh, these videos that we're doing live are going to be shared both by myself and the guests throughout all the different social media platforms. So we're actually going to reach a whole lot more people doing it this way. So I'm really glad that we pivoted because it's just going to bring so much more value to uh, our potential, you know, to our listeners and viewers. And it's all about service, right? And uh, none of us, I don't get paid to do this. My guests don't get paid. My guests don't pay to come on. And we, we don't have a sponsor other than my company. And now I'm going to tell you our sponsor. And that's me. I pay for it. Uh, RCS Online Solutions. We're basically a digital marketing company. We help business owners and uh, 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 business owners and uh, entrepreneurs attract, convert, and retain their ideal customers and clients to achieve even greater success. At the end of the day, you can have the best products, the best service, and the best solutions, but if people can't find what you're offering, they can't find you, they're not going to be able to uh, hire you and utilize your services, right? So awareness equals opportunity. That's what we do, and we often get people ranked before they even pay us a penny. So you get your results before you pay us. Now the best part about our show is our guest, okay? And again, our guest name is Monica M. Henderson. She is the president and founder of M M Mink Life. Mm -hmm. uh, I, yeah, I, thought, I almost thought it said mind, and I was like, oh, sorry. But Mink, <laughs> Mink Life Motivation. And uh, it's pulled by a vision. Pulled by a vision. Pulled by her pain. Monica M. Henderson created Mink Life Motivation Principles to bring change to the entrepreneurial world. Monica went from a single homeless mother without any business prospects to becoming a jet setting wife socialite and business mogul living her dream life. Monica unveils how creating a strong vision for your life and your business will change lives and help you live more healthy, healthy, wealthy and fulfilled. You can reach Monica at www. Mink, M-I-N-K-L-I-F-E, university.com. And now let's bring on Monica. Monica. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Thank you for having me on. I really appreciate this ah. opportunity to share and, and kind of spend some time with you this morning. Ah, thank you so much. And, and you, you know, we've had some great guests and you, obviously you fit the bill right away. I mean, you were, I don't want to say being a single homeless, you know, being a mom and, you know, is, you know, that's a, a, a great thing. But now you're a jet setting and in social. <laughs> I mean, how do you go from one to the other? Can you please tell us a little bit more? Well, the, the reality is, um, I, like most people, were just kind of uh, living um, the life that was kind of set in front of me. So something would pop up. I would say, okay, try this. I'm sorry, did you lose me? Nope, go ahead, you're there. Oh, okay. Um, so, uh, I, you know, I would, I would just kind of make decisions as they presented themselves, not really kind of being pulled um, by a vision necessarily, but really more pushed by my pain. So when uh, something would go wrong, then I would quickly pivot you know, adjust um, and kind of tweak things just to get to the next level or just to get to the next uh, uh, comfort level. Um, and what really kind of changed my life um, was uh, a, a series of unfortunate events uh, where I, I was 
homeless, uh, and not homeless like living on the street, but homeless like, you know, living pillow to post, staying on people's couches so that I could figure out my next, my next move. And um, I was able to take a week. I, I told my, my friend, can you watch my child for a week? I'm going to go look for a job. And I didn't. I didn't go look for a job at all, actually. What I did was I went uh, into uh, this, this internal visioning for myself. And I said, you know, I, I have nothing to lose now. I have no home. I have no job prospects. I have uh, just a two-year-old, a dream. And uh, I, I think I need to kind of make some decisions that are directly correlating to what I really want for my life. And I did. So I spent a week. Um, and essentially what that week was, I turned into the program that I have today. Um, over the years, I've refined it, of course. Uh, but that week is all about setting a new vision for who you are and what you want based on selfish factors. And um, once I realized that if I can be selfish about what I want, then I can give everybody else around me what they want. Um, and so that, that was the case. I did the inner work. I pulled myself up. Uh, it took um, probably about four years to go from, you know, in that struggle to actually kind of uh, being all of those things that you mentioned in my bio. Um, and it was because I was living every single day intentionally and I was making decisions that were only in alignment with what I really want for my life uh, and not not settling for anything outside of that. That is huge. I absolutely love that. And, and, and one thing I like you just pointed out about how it took you four years. So a yes. lot of times people will see people at whatever success level they're at, mm -hmm. four years, five years, 10 years, 15 years, and they'll think that, you know, this is where they're at. And they'll say, I wish I could be there. They don't realize that there was four, five years, six, 10, yes. 12 years, multiple failures, multiple trials, multiple, yep. you know, mental and emotional pain and financial loss, whatever it was, that then they got to that point. No, very rarely do you have an overnight success. So I, I love how you pointed out that it took you four years to get there. You know what I mean? Uh, and the other thing is how you pivoted. I mean, you were literally rock bottom. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. you, were, you were at zero and, and you know, yeah. mindset. And, and sometimes that's a blessing because when you can get your mindset to zero, all you're doing is going forward. So yeah. you, you know, you, you didn't, you didn't sit back and say, well, me, the world owes me something, uh, you know, whatever the excuse is, you sat back and you know, saw your situation said, I want something better. What do I have to do? I, and, and you just created it from in. You, and, and I love that. And, and, you know, myself, I have, you know, a similar history. And uh, some, our last guest did. And you'd be surprised how many people who, who are considered successful today come from ways, you know, stories that you can't even believe. And, uh, and overcame it. So it's so much a mental game. Yeah, I, I think once I started owning the fact that I was in my own life by choice, like that was the, the life I had chosen. And it wasn't that I had woke up one day and was like, oh, I'm gonna be a homeless mother, <laughs> you know, sleep, sleeping on someone's couch. It was little choices every day that I was making that put me in that position. And so understanding that every single solitary choice that I'm making is either getting me closer to what I want or further away from what I want and taking ownership of that, that like my life is what I made it to be. Every person is living the life that they that they have chosen, whether or not they want to live that life or not. And so for me, it was really a matter of now, how do I begin to make the right choices so that I am choosing my greatness, that I'm choosing my best self that i'm choosing the life that i really wanted to live always i've always wanted to be a jet setter i've always wanted to do business internationally i was a little kid playing you know with my lunchbox as a briefcase back then briefcases were a thing in the 80s uh with the briefcase and i would pretend <laughs> hey, i remember the our, lunchboxes as briefcases <laughs> and you know young. and i would shuffle papers and i'd scribble and i'd pretend that i was on the phone on international business calls, speaking languages that I didn't speak at the time and pretending <laughs> like I was an Oh my speech. God, I love it. Like that was who I was as a kid. So to my core, I wanted to be this person, but I had made so many decisions that took me further and further and further away from that, that I, I found myself nowhere near it. And so when I hit that space of no more, when I hit that space of I can't 
do this not one more time. I could not look at in, in my two-year-old's face and see her and all that I want her to be and and push what I wanted for myself onto her, right? Because a lot of the times that's what parents do, right? We don't live out our own dreams, so then we push it out on our children. Well, my kid's going to be the doctor because I can't, right? Or my kid's going to change the world because I can't. I said, no, I did not want that for her. I wanted her to look at me and, and see a role model. I wanted to be the woman that I wanted her to grow up to be one day. And so uh, it was it was that moment, you know, of sleeping on that on that that fold out bed in the living room of one of my friends. And I, I was like, I can't do this anymore. I, there, I will never be in this spot again. And the only way to do that was to make those decisions to go towards my goal, towards my vision. The yeah. beautiful part is I've been, I, I, I captured it all, <laughs> the whole transformation wow. uh, in writing. I, so I journaled the entire time and there were different exercises that I did to kind of change my own mindset um, that I, I captured. Um, and so I've created a coaching program uh, for your personal business network and um your brand development that's based on those on those those same principles that I, I taught myself in order to come out of the depths, right? Um, and so I am sharing that now with the world. My 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 renewed sense of purpose is uh, no one else should have to go through what I went through because I've already went through it. And if I can share it with them so that they can avoid it, then everything I went through was not in vain. Uh, everything that I went through was absolutely for the purpose of saving another soul. And so that is my driving force. That's my motivation. Uh, MINK stands for Motivate, Inspire, Network, Knowledge. And uh, all the time in our program, we talk about what's your motivation. And my current motivation is to change the world one person at a time, teaching them how to live healthy, wealthy, and fulfilled, and being able to get them in business or in their in their work life, being able to be the best possible person in that space as well. So. I love it. And I'd like to touch on, on, on two points. One is uh, in the very beginning, I did first did in the introduction to the show for all five of you. Uh, did you see how I put down, uh, you know, a smart person learns from other people's mistakes? Yes. You know, a, a, gen a smart person learns from their mistakes, right? Mm -hmm. Genius learns from other people's mistakes. So yeah. that ties in perfect. So once you have gone through it and you've learned from it and you put it out there other people won't have to go through it because they can learn from your mistakes instead of making their own and that's one of the reasons i love this show i i usually in some of my headlines i'll put down you know from people who have been there and done that so you don't have mm -hmm. to go through that but the other thing is i want to give you big kudos because you know a lot of people get into those that zero mindset you know that they get to zero right and um when they get to zero they kind of stay there or they make plans or they write things out, but they don't take the action or yes. they don't take the action. They don't take, they certainly don't take massive action, but they don't take any, some people don't even take any real action. They sit down and say, well, I'm going to do this. And eventually I'm going to get into college. And I put in an application. Yeah. I put in four applications and nobody called me. Really? Well, you know what I mean? You know, there's 4,000 people out there. You know, there's 4,000 places and there's, you know, 1,900 people sending that. They didn't even see your application. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, why don't you follow up? Like I guess was saying earlier, send them a card. Send them a brownie, you know, something with your application in a bow, by the way, you know what I mean? And um, but I love how you took the action and you were consistent. Greg Reed talks about that in, in, in stickability and three feet from gold. And he talks about it in some other things about taking massive action. Yeah. Uh, and so doesn't Grant Cardone. He, he talks about taking massive action. So I'm a big fan of, uh, you know, I, I follow a lot of people. I listen to them and uh, they've helped me tremendously and uh, and I learned from them. So I just want to mm -hmm. give you kudos that, you know, you were in a really bad place and a lot of other people are too, but you took that massive action to get out of it. So you need yep. to take a little credit for yourself too, you know, cause not everybody's done that, you all right? Yeah, I mean, and what, what I have done in my program is systemize that action, right? So yes, it's easy for someone to say, oh, well, it's just because she had it in her, right? That she, yeah. she had that get out of it spirit. And it really only took a moment of courage at a time. I'm always scared. And someone asked me, 
uh, when did you get so confident? How did you get so confident? It's like, no, 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 I'm not confident at all. The, the social anxiety that I, <laughs> that I lived with as a child still exists in me. But every day I take a little moment of courage. And in that moment of courage, I do something that forces me outside of my comfort zone. So when I was going through that, that changeover from, you know, being in that space of being down uh, to kind of coming into this new space, every decision that I made was uncomfortable. Every last one of them. I was living 20 miles from where I really wanted to live. And so I would only accept jobs in freelance positions far away from home because that was really the neighborhood that I wanted to live in, right? The, the, the comfortable decision would have been to find a job around me so I can make some money and get out of the situation I was. But that would have just put me in a perpetual spiral of the same. Yep. What I really wanted was to live in Los Angeles. I, where I lived was 20 miles out of Los Angeles. And so I only looked at jobs that were in Los Angeles. And it took me two buses. It took me an hour and a half to get everywhere I needed to go um, to get there. But that being uncomfortable for that moment, now I live in the heart of downtown Los Angeles, in the dream neighborhood. Like I, This is my forever neighborhood. Um, and had I not made those decisions back 10 years ago, I would not be in the position that I'm in now. Um, like, go, like being able to uh, really create that understanding that like change is uncomfortable. So get uncomfortable, get comfortable with change, get uncomfortable, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yep. That's really kind of something that I want people to take with because the discomfort that you'll feel with change is short lived. The discomfort that you will live with, with the longevity of you being in a space that you don't want to be in is so much longer. That yep. is for me the definition of hell is being in a perpetual state of unhappiness. Right. And you want to live in that undercurrent of joy. You want to live in that space where even when things are kind of going wonky. I mean, we had a hellish of five days uh, of riots in, our, in my neighborhood. It was hellish. But in the end, I still had an undercurrent of joy because my family, I have the family that I want. I'm in the space that I want. I was still working with people who I love and enjoy working with and they motivate me and they feel me to no end. So although I was going through it because there was chaos in the world. I had that undercurrent of joy because I was really uncomfortable for a set of years, working seven days a week, taking on jobs that I thought were beneath me so that I could learn the skills that I need to learn in order to move in the next direction, right? That discomfort back then led to absolutely greatness now. And so if we can all just get a little, get comfortable with being uncomfortable, right? Yeah, I what love. Short? Yeah, I, I I love all that. And, and, but the planning of it, man. I mean, you were like systematic. Yeah. You, 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 when you were looking for jobs, you wanted to live in a certain area in LA, and uh, you know, so you were ten ninety nine, whatever it was. But you would literally only look in that area, knowing it would take you two buses and an hour and a half each way to get there. But because that's where you wanted to end up, it wasn't that's where you were going for a bit of time to work, make money, because you could have probably worked within a three mile radius. Mm -hmm. Yeah, save the transportation, save that extra time. But uh, to me, that, that that's systematic in, in, in the longevity that you stuck with it. Kudos to you, man. Yeah. Uh, who does now, that? Now I walk to everything. So I walk a block to the grocery store, to Whole Foods in one direction, to Ralph's in the other. Now I walk to shop. Now I walk to museums and concerts. I'm two blocks from Staples Center, right? So now I walk everywhere. The, the convenience that my life has now was because the discomfort of the building stage. Um, and I was very systematic and I was very strategic. And that is not something that only I can have. Anybody can have that. You just need a blueprint. And so that is what our program is all about, is giving you that blueprint that gives you a direct straight line to what it is that you really want. and what you really truly want, not that like PC, and everyone has that, oh, what I want, would you tell other people? And then there's that what I want when I'm quiet with my own thoughts. Yeah. And I want people to live with that want, the one that you're quiet with your own thoughts. What does that look like? And I love it because that right there brings us to a great point of um, learning, you know, you don't want to take financial advice from your broke brother-in-law, right? So you're giving, right. you're giving, you know what I mean? It's not going to turn out well for you, right? So you're, you've are you been in a certain set, but you had such rigid, systematic rules. I mean, I, 
done this. I've been on the stages fees. I've never heard a couple of things you've said to me in terms of what people did. I've heard a lot of things that people have done to set them on a certain path and keep them consistent. But, you know, deliberately, I want to live in that neighborhood. It's, you know, it's a two and a half mile. I got to take, you know, uh, you know, an hour and a half each way buses. I could work somewhere. But to go through that just because that's where you wanted to live. I mean, you had that vision and you just mm -hmm. created it. Um, but what makes it really possible for other people who might not see it as being possible is you now have laid out your thought mm -hmm. process, how yes. you did it. So now if they just literally check, go down the list, one, two, three, first is get your mind right. Two is create, find out what it is you want, right? And then write mm -hmm. it down and then start using your system to yes. create it and manifest it because, yeah. you know, that's the beautiful part. When you come to my system, you don't even need any of that. Uh, the system is built in, right? So it's built in from the resetting your mindset. There's a whole section. We spend, there are five basic stages that we go through where we reset your mindset. We really think about what it is you really want and what you like. What, what when things go right in your life, how does it feel? When things go wrong in your life, how does it feel? We look at how your, um, what your true vision is and you get to write that out like you get to live in this imaginary space because i believe everything is possible with time right everything everything you can conceive is possible but it requires time right you can't do it tomorrow uh, but it is time people who wanted to travel to the new world uh it was possible they had a dream it was possible uh, but it took time, right? It took time for them to create the boats that were going to be able to make it across the ocean. It took time for them to actually get here and settle. It took t it took a couple generations for them not to kill themselves off with diseases and things, right? It took time. And now that journey is you can you can fly overseas now. You can go in different countries in a matter of hours, right? So everything you want in life is possible in time. It's just a matter of you having the patience and a blueprint to be able to do that. And so we do visualize what that is for you. We outline a, we lay out a map of like what that looks like step by step in order for you to do it for over the next six years. Our six, we have, we call what is the power of six, right? And so we believe every six years, everyone gets a new life and you have new intentions. You have a new space. If you think about it from six to 12, 12 to 18, 18 to 24, you're different in each of those phases and it continues on for the rest of your life. And so for every six years, you get a new, you get a new, a new dream, you get a new vision, which is great, right? You don't get stuck. Yep. And then, um, so we lay out that map for the next six years of your life. What's that going to look like? And then we bring that down to an accountability strategy. Who are you going to act, activate in your life to help you stay on track with this? Who are you going to tell and share your vision with? Then final step is we then activate your action plan. And that is calendaring that is working out, laying out like times to work on things. It's really kind of creating this holistic look at yourself and your business and how you're going to really get there. Not just like, oh yeah, you can do it. I don't believe in rah-rah sessions. I do not believe in rah-rah sessions. The first thing you tell me is I have a dream. I'm going to do something. I was like, okay, put a date on it. We do not believe in rah-rah sessions. We absolutely believe that if you are serious, don't come to me if you're not serious. I don't want, I don't, I don't, we don't want to have a conversation with me if you're not serious. You're serious about really changing your life and getting the most out of your business then this this process will get you there hands down and it won't take long uh because you don't have to go through some of the things i had to go through to figure out the pro process the process already exists i love it and that's the whole difference uh about uh seeking counsel and seeking advice so mm -hmm. in your case right they're actually getting counsel from somebody who has been there and done that. I'm looking, I want to see on, on our post here, did you put your contact information in your bio that you sent me? Yes, it's right there, uh, your URL. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what yeah, I'd like so to do, we got like about five, six minutes left. So I'd love mm -hmm. you to kind of like take over, give us like okay. three things that people need, you know, three ideas, three tips that people can use to achieve success in, in any part of their life. You pick it. Uh, also give us your contact information and okay. uh, whatever else. And if it, you know, if it's three minutes, if it goes to six minutes, it's no big deal. Okay. okay. All right. So um, really simple 
is that your vision and that your life has to start with you. So the first thing you have to absolutely do is be selfish. And I know that that is counterintuitive. I know that everything that everyone has ever told you is, well, you have to think of others. You can't just think about yourself. You are not the center of the universe. And that has been a lie. You have been lied to your entire life. You absolutely are the center of your universe. So every piece of chaos, every piece of joy is orbiting around you. You have created that as your gravitational pull to who you are and you can control that. So I want you to understand that we're gonna come from a space of power in our own lives. You are the center of your universe and you are now going to take charge of your life. I want you to think about what it is that you really want. What's your true heart's desire? What from the internal, when, you, when people aren't listening, when people, when you don't have to give the PC version of it, that you really, really wanna do with your skills, your gifts, your life, your talents, what is that? I want you to write that down and then I want you to create a world in a written space of what that looks like. How does it feel? You're gonna attach your emotions to it. You're gonna get really detailed into it. And the reason why it's so important for you to get really detailed and emotionally attached to this is because that is how manifestation starts. It starts from within. It's like a seed planted in your soul. And when you plant that seed in your soul and you begin to do the work of actually taking action towards that goal, you then can grow into the oak tree that you were meant to be. So if you are a bit of an acorn, uh, you will then turn into a giant oak tree. Right? And I've been called an acorn before. You have. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah. So you, 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 everything you have that you need is within you already. It's there. Yep. Good stuff. It's there. It is literally planting that perfect seed in that perfect soil in your actions and your, uh, how you speak to yourself, how you speak to others how you treat every day as an opportunity for you to start anew. I messed up yesterday. It's okay. I'll wake up tomorrow, start over again. It's Groundhog Day, Groundhog Day, baby. Every day is a new chance to get a new start, right? And so if you wake up every single day in that space, right? Yep. Nurturing that dream, watering that seed and growing it, pretty soon you will see all of the fruits of your labor. You will see a huge oak tree that you're really meant to be. And that is the actionable part. So there's this, I, I consider my lifestyle a bit weird because it's not, it's unconventional. We don't have a microwave and people are like, well, why don't you have a microwave? This is 20, you know, it's 2020. You should have a microwave. And said, no, I intentionally don't have a microwave and I have a very tiny refrigerator. I'm like, well, that doesn't make any sense. And as a matter of fact, my mother-in-law, every time she comes to my house says, your refrigerator is too small. You need a bigger refrigerator and where's the microwave. But the reason why is because I have built a life of such intention that I know I want to live a healthy life. And in order to live a healthy life, even down to the food that I put in my body, right? Even down to how we go about snacks and, and goodies. I still eat cookies and chips and all those things, but I have to put on my shoes, grab my keys, walk down the street, go get it. I get a small serving size. I eat that and then I move on because I know that for a shadow of a doubt that I am not a real adult. And if those things are in the house, the first choice is not going to be the good, healthy stuff. The first choice is going to be the bad stuff. So I've created a lifestyle around me that supports the life that I really want. And I, I, I know that everybody can do it. And if you need extra help, reach out to someone, anyone. But if you really want to kind of take this program, it's you can go to Mink Life Motivation or Mink Life University. Either one of those websites will get you to us and we will be able to help you. But lastly, I wanted to offer something special. So if you're listening to this and you are already excited about like, yeah, I'm ready, let's do this. I wanna see a new vision for my life. We are holding a virtual conference on July 11th and 12th. And I am offering a free ticket to anyone who goes on our Instagram page or our Facebook page. And we are going to give you a free ticket to the conference because I want you to be successful. I want you to see the vision for your life. And we are bringing on uh, uh, 36 plus speakers and different expertise to talk about their way of helping vision from their, from their expertise. Uh, we have 24 
uh, breakout sessions on on personal development, on business development, on brand development, and on networking, getting out there and connecting with people. Uh, we're going to have two powerful days. And I know that anybody who comes to this conference will get something from it and they will begin those steps of changing their life. So if you right now go to Mink Life Motivation on Facebook or Mink Life University and you like our page, I will then reach out to you and, and give you a ticket to our website. It's a personal person, baby. I, me or somebody from my team will talk to you. Um, and we will make sure that you have a free ticket to our to our event that is July 11th and 12th. I mean, so excited. And Ronald, I just want to thank you for, you know, creating this space for entrepreneurs like myself uh, who, you know, this platform is amazing and you are a, a gracious and amazing host. And I, I've had so much time, so much fun sitting here and, and chatting with you. I wish this could go on forever. <laughs> Thank you so much. But you have so much to offer. You know what I mean? And you've been through so much. But I yeah. love again, I love the fact how you you didn't allow it to just enable you and, and well, now I'm a statistic. You took that, you went you not only allowed it to empower you, but then you took the massive action, the consistent massive action day in and day out, day out for years. And then on top of that, now that you're doing okay, you then added to that cake. And, and now you're creating a program to give back and help others. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. it's me uh, who should be thanking you. I mean, it, you know, and there's so many other people out there that need, you know what I mean? Because, you know, everybody goes through what they go through. But having somebody yeah. who's been there and done that, giving them a step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step way, um, you know, because we, we all see the people when we go to the events. And they're all, everybody's slick and they got the words and they're using the yeah. energy and they got you all you know that they're negative over here my bad life here and then they're selling all the good books and their stuff is over here so now they're anchoring and oh my god but uh so i love when someone like you because he's just so real raw and relatable and yeah. You, yeah you overcome so much but then you went on to give back by creating this program so thank you kudos yeah. to you thank you thank you all right well Anything I, else you want to say in closing? No, I just, again, I'm just so gracious for the, just this time and space and for you trusting me with your brand and your show. Because, um, you know, it, it's always about trust and making sure that people have a good synergy. And so I, I want to thank you so much for, for this opportunity. You know, we could go another minute or two if you wanted to keep thanking me for something. <laughs> you know what I mean? We could think of something, right? It, it could be the right. Thank you for wearing blue. Yeah, I, I, I kind of enjoy that. More. Yeah, thank you. It, no, it's really nice. I appreciate it. I'm grateful that uh, I have an opportunity to do this and, and give back. And for me, it, it's good too. You know what I mean? Because we all have it, yeah. history, right? So it's nice. Yeah, we're all in this together. Yeah. yeah, we all are. All right. So I want to thank you very much. You've been a great guest. And uh, I'm going to sign off now. I'm going to close out the show. Um, and then I'm going to have to start the process of posting everything up, okay? Sounds good. Thank you very much.